from there we'll mm -hmm. interview you. There's two interviews. There's there's a first longer one and there's a second one that's a cultural fit interview. Um, and then after that interview, we'll typically let you know if we're thinking about placing you with an organization and try to get your input. You know, we want to place you at J.P. Morgan. Um, how do you feel about that? But there's not a lot of flexibility or back and forth. We're not going to keep going for you weeks and weeks. <laughs> you know, we're, there's not, um, we won't do that. But, um, and then after that time, we'll send you an offer, and that would be in mid-February. Okay, so back to this, what are we looking for? We're looking for uh, folks with, who are self-starters, strong project management backgrounds. Um, essentially, you're not going to be an intern. Um, you're coming on site and you're essentially going to be a consultant, and that's the expectation of our participating organizations. A lot of times when we're talking with them, they say, we don't want to handhold this person. Um, because they're expecting um, a level of quality in our fellows. So project management skills, being able to come on site and start working is very important. Uh, financial and quantitative skills. So a lot of this uh, involves knowing the cash flows, knowing the MPV, ROI, and whatnot. That's, that's essential to creating the business case, saying that Here's a project that I would like to recommend, and here's the payback period. Here's um, the MPV. These are things that many organizations look at when they're evaluating projects, and so we expect you to be able to communicate that as well. So that doesn't mean you need to be a financial whiz. It just means you need to be familiar with those, um, those terms and those topics. Communication skills. So this is really, really important. Um, you could be, you can come up with, let's say, you come up with a new technology that can save your organization 50% in energy reductions, let's say by tomorrow. Um, you go and you try to present it to your supervisor, and your supervisor says no. And you're surprised, you're like, this is a great project, how can you say no? Well, some, there's a miscommunication. A lot of times we have fellows that are surprised when they come up with a good project but their organizations are not buying it. Um, this is where communication skills comes in. You need to understand your organization's priorities. You need to understand um, what are they value? What, are, what, what do they value? How can you present your project in a way that's compelling to them? Um, so communication is key to making sure that your recommendations don't sit on the shelf and they're actually implemented. Resourcefulness. Um, also critical, um, we are looking for folks that if you don't have all the information at hand, you know where to go, you know who to talk to, you're able to problem solve. Um, a lot of times, you're not going to have everything that you need. You're not going to come first day on the job and all the information is just sitting for you at the desk. You have to know who to talk to, who to work with. Um, so that's where resourcefulness comes in. And then, relevant professional background. Um, it's great if we can find fellows or applicants that have worked in the energy or energy efficiency space before. A lot of times we don't, and it's not a, a, a requirement of this program. But it is, it would be helpful if you had some sort of experience that's similar um, to being a fellow. So that may mean that, for example, you worked with a major firm in doing financial modeling on a completely different topic. It doesn't have to be energy, but you know how to find, do that modeling. That's something that we're going to look for, and that's going to work in your favor on the application. So that's what we mean by relevant professional background. And of course, um, you have to be able to work in the US for the summer. All right. Um, I'll pause. Any questions from anyone? That training session, is it like throughout the year or is it just at a certain time? Yeah, um, good question. It's, it's in May and it happens before the fellows, fellowships start in June and it's just for a week. Okay, so it's only in May? Yes, it's in the, at the end of May. At the end of May. Mm -hmm. okay. There's like several of us 
in here that are going to, as a part of our program, we go to Costa Rica for a month. Okay. But yeah. it, it like starts in April, so I think. Right? So it's in the middle of middle, May. Right? Oh, middle of May. June. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That, was one, that was one of our big questions. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, uh, do you know, like, when in May? Mid-May yeah. through mid-June. Okay. Yeah. So our, we, like, through the yeah. Yeah, our, our training is actually the 21st yeah. <laughs> through the 23rd or June 24th or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And it's just that one week. Yeah, it's just that one week. And, um, and it is mandatory. Um, and this much exception, but it is mandatory. Right. <laughs> um, anything else? No. <laughs> so, um, what do you get as a fellow of the training, uh, the salary? We have a network of over a thousand people at this point. That includes supervisors, VPs of sustainability, and past fellows. Um, resources and tools. You, you also get access to different tools that we provide for you over the summer to help support your work. Um, so you get that. And then publicity. We do a press release at the beginning of the summer to announce the organizations we're working with and at the end. And in the middle, if you want to do a blog, we have a blog um, and many fellows blog throughout the summer. And then, of course, real-world experience. Um, it's definitely not your standard internship. You're creating your own project and your own solutions. And that's expected of you, which is great. All right. So here are some of the organizations that our fellows have gone on to work with. So after you do the fellowship, where do you, where do you go? Well. These are some of the organizations that our fellows are now working with. So it's pretty impressive. Um, you definitely get the tools and the experience you need to help you in your career if you choose to be continue to do sustainability work. All right, so I went through the application um, process. So again, the two deadlines, um, interviewing January through February for the first, matching, which means sending out offers early February to late February, um, and then same here, um, both different dates. January 8th, again, you get offers later in March. And I believe that is it. Oh, and the train, there you go, the 23rd through the 27th. So, anything else about the application process? Questions? What's um, everybody's like background here? I'm just a freshman. Okay. But I like wanted to like I'm interested to like I mean of course not now but mm -hmm. like later so yeah, sure. yeah cool thanks for coming. Mm -hmm. um, we are all in the uh, master's program for environmental management and sustainability. Okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Cool. So you guys know um, Phoebe and um, we saw yes. their presentations. Saw the presentations. Yeah. Okay. No. Oh, they did presentations? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. I didn't know that. <laughs> cool. Cool. Yeah. Great. All right. Um, well, I believe that's it. Let me see if my contacts info. No, I have my cards in my bag, but I can pass them around. Um, hopefully, you guys are able to apply and yeah. doesn't conflict with your program. Not next year. <laughs> well, that's true. That's true. Yeah, yeah. There's always next year. It's it's a uh, year. Yeah, exactly. Exactly.